watching a documentary, um, air crash investigation on a previous flight from 30 years ago that crashed in the Amazon jungle. Uh, the pilots put the wrong decimal point into autopilot and they flew south instead of north and ran out of fuel, crashed in the, in the Amazon. And the survivors had to walk for a day and a half to get to the nearest village, which just made me think that I didn't even realise places could be that remote. And the narrator was saying that had they not got to the nearest village, the plane would probably never have been found. Started applying that to MH370. Maybe that could have gone down in a jungle. Are there any jungles mm. close to the satellite pings? Mm. Uh, the last known coordinates of where the plane could have been. And from what I remember, the, the northern arm of that circle was over Cambodia, Thailand, and all the way mm. to when maybe where that cursor is there. Spent a little bit of time, a few nights after, just uh, going through looking for basically white and black smudges, crushed mm. trees, that sort of thing, and came across the plane that we're all seeing now. Either side of it first, funny enough, I saw these smudges here. Mm and went in on them, and then, mm. you know, right in between them is the plane. Initially, I thought it was in flight, but mm. the closer you get, and if you look at it from different angles, mm. you can see it seems to be laying up against a place where a plane would come to a stop if it had landed before it. And you've got possibly the trail there mm. leading up to it. I initially thought it was a plane in, in flight until I sort of went down to the because you can actually go into gra uh, ground level here. It says that I can exit ground view and you get really, really close. Uh, so it's asking me to exit ground, ground level view there. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things, but the most, the, the, the most important thing for me was the gap between the back of the plane and the tail. Mm -hmm. And then you've, you've also got this little white section off to the, to the right that looks like it could have broken off the plane. The other thing was I knew the, the Boeing 777-200 was 63.7 metres in length. Mm. And then they've got the measuring tool, which from front to back, really, you're looking at 68.98, 69, maybe 70 metres. When you allow for the gap in between the plane, it was it's close enough. I found the plane in 2016 and found it hard for people to listen at the start. And I kind of just want to go and, because I feel like I know the plane's there. And I just want to go and see it through to the end. Mm. When I go there and actually see the plane or, or stand there and go, ah, it's definitely not here. And then stop thinking about it and that's that. Me and my brother Jack, we're looking at flying out on the 15th for this month. Uh, we'll probably set out on foot maybe the 16th or 17th after we've settled in, uh, get a guide or a couple of guides and then just, just go from there. I'm sort of picturing me and my brother Jack sort of wading through branches and then like, hang on a minute, seeing a, like in my wildest dreams, like I think I can see the plane and then sort of going up to it. If that did happen, that would be like really surreal. But even if there was no plane itself and you're just looking at a smudge or a load of trees flattened, the fact that Cambodia, the pings, from the satellite data over Cambodia, would probably be enough for someone to go, oh, I'll go and give it a go. But to actually see a, you know, almost a full plane on, on satellite, which is the best thing we can use if you're looking for something on planet Earth, mm. it's, you know, satellite's the way to go. If you can see a whole plane there laying at a 45 degree angle on a mountain, then I, I think it's an absolute no-brainer. <laughs>